Okay, so good morning, magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Um, first of all, thank you guys for coming. Uh, I know at 10.30, no men's basketball, or men's basketball will be going up against NU. So, <laughs> thank you for spending your time here. And uh, as, as mentioned, I am from the School of Business. So, what I'm going to be presenting here will be basically more about the economic aspects of uh, our relation uh, our relations between uh, between the two countries so this is an on, this is an ongoing study uh, sponsored by the korean foundation uh, regarding identifying some of the more intricate or more ground level ground level channels in which south korea uh, can help the philippines as far as uh, relations are concerned so what i'm going to be presenting here as far as selected indicators Will be more will be more ground level, not just the usual economic indicators that we are we we are more familiar with. So to start things off, let me present you my agenda. So first of all, the motivations for the study, followed by a survey of the uh, like a quick survey of the numbers between South Korea and the Philippines, and then afterwards connecting the policies, trying to connect the few policies between uh, the two countries, and of course concluding remarks. So to start things off, first of all, for the motivation of this study, so we in uh, uh, sometime last year, President Moon Jae-in, I guess President Moon Jae-in uh, has a, uh, instituted a new Southern policy for the country, which serves to as a venue for our for our countries to improve ties with ASEAN, and this includes the Philippines. And this is anchored on three three main pillars. So, as seen as illustration here from the presidential committee in uh, in blue ha in, in blue house, these three pillars include people, which is how to improve the safety of Koreans in the Philippines, and the development of a system allowing Filipinos to work in some selected Korean uh, industries. So, what I'm going to show here, as far as these three pillars are concerned, is how is it directed towards the Philippines? So, and then the second one is on prosperity, and that would include making it easier for Korean logistics, fi uh, film, and manufacturing to make large investments in the Philippines. How, do, how, how can they do that? And improving the importation of Philippine agricultural products to Korea. So, that, so those are the main points of agenda as far as the second pillar is concerned. And the third one is, of, is on peace, and this is more on the exchange of military assets. So some of the directions of promoting the NSP, again, as, as, as per, the, as per uh, the Korean government, are as follows. So you would have here uh, three, three, uh, more of the details of these three pillars. So greater mutual understanding through expansion of exchanges, Building a base for mutual, for mutually beneficial future-oriented economic cooperation and constructing a peaceful and safe environment in the region. So, uh, the problem, though, the problem though so far is that uh, there's there is a uh, there, there is sort of a mismatch between the two countries as far as these agendas are concerned because one, let's say in, in Korea. The president only has a one-year, a uh, one-term, five, one five-year term, whereas in the Philippines, we are, our president only has a one six-year term. So, so, there are some critics that are saying that this uh, this kind of system is not really beneficial in terms of creating a long-term partnership because five years, six years, they seem they say it's too short. Because after what? After three years, uh, nagiging, uh, nagiging, uh, focus na is building the legacy rather than extend, like passing on, let's say, for a future president to uh, to continue whatever policies. So there's so that's the prop that's one of the problems. So one of the things that currently the Duterte administration wants to do in order to address that is to establish a very long term plan in coordination with the uh, with NEDA. And this is the, the Philippines' ambition 2040. So there are three life objectives here of Matatag, Maginhawa, and Panatag. So, and as, as you've noticed, this will go beyond any beyond uh, 
uh, let's say the next three or four presidents term uh, presidents terms pa. So based on this, they have this they have this diagram here from Neda outlining what needs to be done before 2040 arrives. So they have okay, so so they they have here the uh, the their objective at the end of President Duterte's term would be to lay down the foundation for exclusive growth, inclusive growth, high trust resiliency, society and globally competitive knowledge economy. So these are supported by also three pillars, similarly, of enhancing the social fabric, otherwise known as malasakit, in, inducing, reducing inequality, pagbabago, and patuloy na pagunlad or increasing growth potential. So the challenge now is how, the challenge now, as far as, as my research goes, is how are we going to connect those two together? The NSP and, and Ambition 2040. Now, by the numbers, so, uh, apologies in advance, I will be boring you with some numbers, and a little bit of a background on that would, uh, would be the World Economic Forum uh, in indices in which uh, this is published every year. Now, a little bit of background, the numbers here are survey numbers uh, collect, uh, collating perspectives. So, perspectives from the people in, in and outside the country in question. Meaning that these indices that I'm going to show you for the next few minutes are perceptions. Okay, perceptions siya ng mga, ng mga sinurvey ng World Economic Forum. So, this is the overall ranking in terms of competitiveness. As you can see here, the blue, the blue bar and the red line represents South Korea. So the blue bar represents the actual index over the over the last ten years, and the red line represents the world ranking. Niya. So and then the Philippines is represented by the green bar and the purple okay, and the purple uh, uh, curve. So you notice, of course. Korea performs the Philippines in every aspect, every year. So that would tell us also how to take, uh, how far, how far apart also the competitiveness in Korea compared to the Philippines. Okay. And then of course GDP comparisons. In this case, these are in uh, in dollar terms. So you will also notice that Korea has been steadily increasing, it's increasing as well, and the uh, Philippines relatively flat. Right. Now, here's where what I'm saying now when it comes to other economic indicators. In, in, instead of just you looking at the usual GDP, usual okay, the usual GDP trade numbers, since my objective for this study is to go more ground level, what I will be presenting are some more numbers regarding innovation, the innovation capacity, and business complexity. So in business environment in general. So first of all, we start with the innovation capacity. Okay? So uh, and then indices and rankings. As you can see, in terms of South Korea, it's been relatively flat, okay? but they still rank very high. In the Philippines case, you notice ganon siya kalikot. Okay, malikot siya. It's been very volatile. This is actually an indic uh, one of the things that actually make this a volatile is it was only recently that the Philippine government recognized the value of science. If if you if you know, if, yeah, if you know, yeah, social science, hard sciences. But because it was only, if you recall, it was only recently that the Philippine government established like a balik scientist program, right? So that's one. So and fortunately, fortunately, and then, uh, what happens is that there's a lot of incentives now for. PhDs for PhD graduates who studied abroad to come back to the Philippines and they will get incentivized they can get research grants from DOST for instance so that's a, that's a good indication so so that's so that's one second is the quality of research institutions and university industry collaborations as you notice there has been the Korea is performing better in terms of university industry collaborations compared to the Philippines in the same way as well as R&D, research and development, and the availability of scientists and engineers yeah. as well. Now, in line with that is the business environment. 
So that's as far as the innovation as innovation goes. So for the business environment naman, you would, uh, in terms of overall business sophistication, this means yung level of complexity as to how one business can affect another. The meaning you're a supplier. Your supplier let's say supplier ka ng nito, ng mga pointers. How good are your relationships are with an uh, with let's say anong brand to? Prolink. Okay. With let's say the supplier Prolink, how good is it the relationship it with one that uses this? Or how fa like how fast how fast can you deliver goods? How fast can you uh de how, how fast can you uh deliver services. So that's what business sophistication means. So unfortunately for the Philippines, we've been, we tried to go up, but now we're down again. So, so that's, that's the overall picture of it. Furthermore, your nature of competitive advantage. Uh, you will notice that in Korea, that has been, they've been high, they've been steady, but in the Philippines, again, we're trying, we're, we're going down for some reason. Then the value chain breadth, the I teach operations management, value chain is all about how do you justify the price that you're paying for. Like what makes a what makes a book cost five hundred pesos? So so it's in that case where uh, Korea has been managing it better than the Philippines, what the Philippines uh, does. And then of course the local supplier quantity and quality indices as well is an important business environment indicator. So you will notice that in Korea, uh, they've been very much reliant more on local suppliers. I mean, local suppliers, as in the Philippines. Well, the Philippines, medyo okay naman din siya that we're trying, we're also looking, there's an improvement in the quality and the quantity of local suppliers to, do, uh, to provide raw materials for, uh, for manufacturing, for services, etc. And then, the state of cluster development is an important and an interesting indicator. What does this mean? Uh, cluster development is, is a measure of how well the country develops a business center, an industrial center. In the Philippines, think of that as Clark Development, Laguna, Ayala Techno Hub, so on and so forth. But it's a cluster of, it's, it's, it's an area where businesses, industries, services are, are located and are working together to develop the community or to, be, to build the economy. So in the Philippines, it has been erratic. One of the reasons why it's been erratic is right now, right now, because of the ongoing, ongoing debates on the tax reform, yeah, train one pa lang tayo. So train two, train three, train four will, will inevitably affect whatever tax incentives that we have on those science parks, on those industrial parks right now. And Korea, on the other hand, Korea has been very generous in those in that aspect. Um, when we went to Korea last year, one of the biggest developments that we're seeing right now is the, an attempt to move your center of commerce, center of uh, center of government from Seoul. To Sejong City, which is a two-hour, uh, it's a two-hour train, a two-hour, three-hour bus ride from Seoul. So that, and then there's a grow, and then there's growing development there as well, as far as businesses are concerned. So, so those are the things that uh, make up the business environment. With that, now after presenting all of those numbers, what do we mean? You know, what's the story behind? So what do these two numbers suggest? Being economic power compared to the Philippines, South Korea is in a good position to help us, basically. So it's motivate and notice that most of the numbers I presented to you show that Korea is declining in rank. That can only mean uh, that can mean or that may mean that major in decline siya in terms of its domestic capability. So it has more incentive to expand overseas. So and then it's a grow and being a growing economy, Philippines must continuously improve to reduce its overall volatility and sustain its growth. And what do these numbers point? They give us some some indicators and justifications on how to concretely carry out NSP and where within the ambition 2040 context will make this happen, which I will be showing to you how it's done. 
Now, some I've noticed some of you already have a copy of my first policy paper. Yes, that's shown in detail there. So I'm just reiterating. Okay, I'm going to reiterate it here, wherein uh, what I try to do or what we try to do here would be to match, to match the more immediate 2017 to 2022 Philippine Development Plan strategies as uh, as managed by NEDA with potential South Korean areas for contribution. So for instance, in terms of enhancing the social public, malasakit, so these are, it's in detail in the whole entire NEDA report. So what, we, what I did is to match those specific provisions of the PDP plan with, and how can South Korea help. So as far as, as far as the malasakit public is concerned, and the malasakit pillar is concerned, this is how we can do it. Now, same thing as well with the pagbabago. So first of all, more on the economic opportunities in agriculture, forestries, and fisheries. I'm just lifting this all from the PDP as again as from the PDP. But these are that like, these are some of the suggested recommendations for NSP to take effect as far as the PDP 2017 to 2022 is concerned. And then, and then more on the pagbabag is more on the trabaho and negosyo aspect of that PDP. So under so it's identified here as well that like these are what the government wants to do. And what we're suggesting for South Korea to enter into the picture as far as the development is concerned would be on the right side, on, on your right side. So that's how it, so that's how it's being done. And then and then lastly will be more now on the patuloy na pag-unlad vigorously advancing science technology and innovation. Now I would like to spend a little bit more time on a little bit more time on this because as far as university industry collaborations are concerned, very similar ang environment ng South Korea at ng Philippines. Like for so, like so, like South Korea isn't really too keen on producing scientific academic papers as much as they want to collaborate with industry. And we are in a prime position to do that as well. There's a lot of us here that we can, most of us think that our studies, our research is really to benefit society. Heck, UP, para sa bayan. Now, so we want to make, we want to get more of that. And again, given that similarities, you know, given those similarities, South Korea can better equip us on how to actually do that as well. So, and then what else, what else can be done? So what South Korea is doing is adopting a catch-up approach in building their innovation capacities. Remember, they've been, yeah, even though it's been more, it, it's been a while since the Korean War, uh, but that kind of catch-up approach is actually what made them what they are right now. So, the, the DT, so in, in, on the other hand, the DTI has developed a comprehensive roadmap on building those inclusive innovation ca capabilities domestically as well. So innovation is geared on improving acquired know-how and technologies to grow their own domestic businesses. Prime example of that is Samsung. If you know, okay, sorry Apple users, uh, may, mga, may mga iPhone users ba dito? I'm, I'm particularly biased to Samsung. <laughs> okay. But what Samsung does is take innovations from other, take technologies from other countries, its rivals, take it back home, improve on them. That's what they do. That's what they do. And in the same way, the Philippines, because we have a very talented human resource pool naman, we're very madiskarte. We're trained to think of ways on how to have new uses of existing technologies. Then we can probably do the same. Okay. So how to do that? What's the what's the know-how? What's the technol What's the technical aspects of that? That's what where we can. Uh, that's what where we can uh, also learn from them. Okay. And also tax incentives. Okay. So. Right now, give, okay, given, okay, given the developments in the tax reform, we're also in the prime position to also mirror whatever South Korea is doing as far as incentivizing innovations and research and development is concerned. So, so in, uh, some, of, okay, some concluding remarks okay, uh, for this one. 
So uh, some of the insights and moving forward, hopefully I would see you again in November. So for a for okay for a full version of this would be one, what should okay what should be South Korea's appropriate strategic perceptions towards the Philippines as a destination for its new southern policy? Okay, as um as a, as a as a professor of operations, one of the things I've always been also trying to teach my students is how do we concretize something. But we have all of these policies, we have all of these strategies, but how do we make them real? Okay, how do we make them doable? So that's, that's, that's the thrust. So the next step would be, okay, I, we already tried to match NSP with Ambition 2040 or with the PDP 2017 to 2022. What's the next step? Okay, how, can they, how can Koreans here right now in the Philippines be able to implement something like that? Or at, at, at least at least also to make to help it start okay, to help it start. We're, we're almost half we're ha almost or yeah we're halfway to president Duterte's term but also that Moon Jae-in is also having troubles back home as far as his presidency is concerned so medyo nagiging mas urgent ngayon siya as far as okay, so like I said okay like I said the term limits of a president or of a leadership is a problem is a problem for both countries. Okay. He, it's not certain that the next president would continue NSP. It's not certain that the next president would push forward, uh, would push forward with Ambition 2040. Okay. So then what should the Philippines do to take advantage of South Korea's new Southern policy? So that's the other aspect of it. How do we make our environment conducive enough to accept South Korean aid? Aid in the sense that it's not about money, it's not about it's not a, it's not about uh, trade goods, it's not about foreign aid, but it's all about the other aspects of it, the technical know-hows, the skills, etc. Because right now, for instance, there have only been a few professors, for instance, who got their studies abroad in Korea, for instance, and then went back to the Philippines and then started applying what they learned there here. So that's okay, that's something that we need to call today. So question is how do we how do we let's say for example here in UP create an environment in which all of our professors and students who went abroad came back and came back and tried to contribute to UP's development. So how do we do that? First thing. And then of course how can the Philippines achieve that environment favorable towards foreign Foreign presences and investments, not only for Korea, but also the other countries that we have good relations with. You know, we have good relations with. It's not just about Hallyu, <laughs> as far as Korea is concerned. Okay? Fine, we love K-pop, we love K-drama. Okay? But how does, what's the economic impact on that on the Philippines? Okay. Now that I think about it, but they were major, as far as that particular aspect of our relations is concerned, SB19 is very potential, uh, the, has the potential for that. Right? To, to, to transform our Philippine entertainment industry. Okay? So, so that's an example. How do we sustain that? How do we move forward? Okay. And how can South Korea's infrastructure development and innovation experiences can be employed to help the Philippines in its own development. So, Samsung, Hyundai, LG, okay, all of these companies were really big companies in Korea, help the Philippines, ah, uh, help the country grow. Meron ba tayo mga ganong klaseng businesses in the Philippines? Meron ba ganong klaseng setup sa Philippines? Where in our own conglomerates, our own businesses can be more para sa bayan kind of aspect and how can we learn from those experiences in Korea that could also that can also contribute to a similar development in the Philippines? So those are the next steps. Okay, those, those will be the next step. Actually, the final steps uh, that I, that we will be taking uh, for the rest of the year as far as this research is concerned. Okay. So with that, okay, so with that, uh, okay, thank you very much for your attention.